What's up there YouTube, it's Clormo with another video on integration of GarageBand for iPad into Logic Pro X and we're going to be talking about smart instruments so let's get right away into it. If you have an iPad and you haven't downloaded GarageBand for it, I suggest you do so. If you're losing Logic Pro, you, after seeing this video, you're going to see that it's a very good investment and it's very helpful in your workflow and to speed up the process of making certain things. Assuming that you have the GarageBand for iPad app, what we're going to do is we're just going to go and open GarageBand first. And I already have a few files here. So what's, this is what you're seeing, but what I'm going to do is hit the plus sign on top, go to create a new song. And this is what we're presented with first is either light loops, which we're not going to talk about or tracks. So we want to talk about smart instruments. What are the smart instruments? Well, the range of smart instruments here range from the guitar all the way to your smart drums. Well, what we want to do is talk about the smart keyboard because it's the simplest way of showing you what we want in this video. So once you select the smart keyboard, you're going to notice right away if you paid attention in the Logic Remote tutorial that we have a view similar to the chord strips view that Logic Remote was showing you. It's exactly the same, only that you have control over the, the, the whole settings of the whole project, obviously, because you're dealing with GarageBand and the settings for GarageBand located in this button here to the right. So we're seeing that we have a few settings here. You can adjust the tempo of the of the file. Obviously, this is all for the file. But the very next setting there, the key will affect your smart instruments. So notice that when I change the key, to anything other than the default C major, you are going to change the available default chords or chord strips that you have. And that's because those are chords that mesh better with the key that you want to play your song in. So we're going to leave it at the default C major because it's just for showing you what that does. And then from there on out, the time signature, you should know what that is by now. But everything from fade out on down it's just settings that affect the whole file that we're not going to deal with in this tutorial. The last setting that I, that it, from this list that we need to know of, it's edit chords. And again, this is exactly the same or works exactly the same as the Logic Remote counterpart. So every bluish chord strip shows me what that chord is. So we go from B all the way the different chords every time I press one is going to become blue and it's going to tell you what chord it is. So what this view does or enables for you is that you can manually change it to whatever I want. And if I hit done, it's going to keep it like that. So if I want to revert to what I have, I press revert and there it gave me my default chord strip. So you are not only tied to the key change from the settings, right? You can also manually change each and every one of them. One little drawback, if you can call it that, that the smart instruments have is that you are limited to what actual synths or software instruments you can use. For example, the keyboard, you're only allowed to use this eight with the grand piano being the default one. Obviously, you can try each one of them if you have a very good idea that the sound that any of those gives you what you want and you can play with that and then later export it to Logic Pro. But a safe way of dealing with this is using just the grand piano, the default, getting some chord progressions in there and then exporting that and finishing in Logic Pro X because once it's in Logic Pro X you can change your software instruments to whatever you have already in your software. So with that I am just going to record something so we can save the file and show you the last few bits of the tutorial. So 
I recorded something there that and that enables your little track view icon so I can see my media information and now to save it I just simply go back to my songs you see that it's saved now I'm gonna hit the my song and I'm gonna change that name to something that it's a little bit more descriptive of what I want to do obviously you can name it anything and do accept and to make this available for your Logic Pro X what you're gonna do is gonna hit select you're gonna select your project and then hit the little share icon on the top left go to iTunes and from here select project and that's when you're done you're gonna have that up now available to be able to import it into Logic Pro X and for that we need to go to iTunes and with that I'm gonna show you right now I'm gonna switch back to the computer view I'm already in iTunes and I have my iPad connected and I have apps selected from the list so now I'm gonna go all the way down to my file sharing select GarageBand and this is the list of everything that I have exported so far and some of these I already put in my computer so I could literally just go in and delete if I want do whatever I want but I'm just gonna go down to the smart is which is today right which was done just now and I will simply drag and drop this into my finder and just put it in any folder I want and right there it's uh it's available for you and why is it available you're gonna highlight it and you're gonna right click and say open with logic pro x it's already my default because i don't have garage band in my mac so it's gonna open it with the next available one or you can set it manually also but if you had garage band and you open this i'm pretty sure you're just gonna open it in garage band so what i'm gonna do is just complete that so you can see it's gonna ask me to save it so I'm just gonna give it the same name just save it as it was you you notice you can change your settings there and now there's my file available in Logic Pro X and if I play it And that's it from there I can change my instrument from grand piano I can let's see let's get something a little bit weirder like some horns so you can play around and do that so if you have an idea in mind with another instrument you can always work it in your iPad pretty quickly, create a chord progression with the grand piano and then fine tune it here. I'm going to go back now into my iPad view to the project that we were just looking because I just want to show you lastly, create another smart instrument. All I want to do is create a guitar just so you see the fret that's all it is I just wanted to show you the fretboard smart instrument view which is also exactly the same as the one you see in Logic Remote right Logic Remote was tied to what track you had selected in Logic Pro X and it's just a mirror of what you already have in GarageBand for iPad so it's pretty nice to understand it will help you definitely in your quest for you know doing some rough sketches quicker than what you're usually be taking right now at the moment with uh, just a MIDI keyboard in Logic Pro X so with that uh, that's really all there is to know about how to integrate your smart instruments from GarageBand iPad into Logic Pro X and get busy with it so with that I'm gonna be closing the tutorial and remember this is the first video that's gonna start up the monthly giveaway 
the rules are still the same if you are a subscriber leave a comment on this video if you are not a subscriber then hit that subscribe button please leave a comment on the video and whoever comes out as the winner is going to be announced in the next video which at the moment it's going to be a monthly deal the monthly giveaway is a monthly deal so to avoid confusion i'm just going to leave it as the next video it's going to come out in a month and that's where i'm going to announce the winner and i'm going to obviously put some descriptors in the title so when you get your notifications from your subscriptions you're going to see giveaway winner has been announced and that way we'll keep it going so the schedule is going to change when i my schedule of posting videos change but right now i'm going to keep it at, uh, for a month as i said just to avoid confusion so thanks again for watching thanks for the support make sure that you follow me on social media as you can see here in the little graphic and with that peace out youtube